here we are again, 150 years after, an hour ago. <laughs> and even though the first talk uh, uh, seems to be a bit chaotic, I promise I, we are following this, and uh, I'm stop in point five, point three, in number five point three. We were talking about spirituality, the spirituality of martyrdom or spirituality of mission till the very end. You remember? Here we were, here we are. Okay? Then uh, we will continue with this uh, a very, very rich uh, period of the history of Ignatian spirituality where many of the charismatic points. Uh, rooted in the Ignatian and First Companion's experience became reality, uh, incarnated in history. And the ministries that the first mission that appeared in this very, very uh, important document for Ignatian spirituality that it is called Formula Instituti, uh, the, this uh, very brief five chapter document that the first Jesuit they had to give to the Pope to be approved uh, uh, by the Pope. Uh, the Formula Institute became reality through times, no? as we are trying to do all of us nowadays. So let's continue from uh, Aquaviva to Lorenzo Ricci. So we are uh, leading the, the Ignatian spirituality towards the difficult time, maybe the most difficult time of our history, what was the, uh, the suppression, the suppression of the society. So, uh, a spirit of mission to any part of the world. Not time to, to, to talk about all missions, and but uh, enough if we say that uh, Brazil and Paraguay and Canada and uh, Mexico and uh, then China and India and then Vietnam and uh, the Formula Institute is said as far as possible. We as Jesuit, because of our Ignatian spirituality, we, our structure allows us to go to those parts of the world where other religious congregations, maybe they cannot. Not because they don't want, but because of the structure they have, they are not allowed to, to have this flexibility or mobility that the Jesuit have. So Ignatian spirituality, as we have seen from the very, very first years, with Peter Faber and Francis Xavier, is institutions in movement, keep on moving, in movement. Of course, great big institutions is, were born, university and big colleges or high school like this one, that's true. But the spirit inspired the institutions, always dynamic, keep on walking, keep on walking. The, build, the spirit of pilgrimage is here. So. Here we are, here we are. And uh, this period of time was very important and significant because of this I have called the spirituality of caring according to Matthew 25 chapter in his gospel, in his gospel. This is the hospital of uh, La Magdalena, Magdalene Hospital, very close to Loyola where Ignatius was born. As you know, when Ignatius Travel back to Aspetia and Loyola from Paris in uh, 1535, he left the group of companions studying in Paris. He finished his studies and traveled back to Loyola. But he decided not to live in his uh, very luxury house, family house, and went to live to the East Hospital. It is uh, uh, maybe a couple of kilometers far from the family house. And this is, has been restored. It has been recently, recently restored. It appears very, very nice. So uh, the spirituality of caring, be trying to be close to people suffering, to sickness, sick people, uh, it belongs to the very first uh, origins and root, roots of our Ignatian spirituality. When Ignatius sent very important theologians, such as Laine and Salmeron, to the first session of the Council of Trent, we are talking about 1548, and these men were sent to take part in the Council of, as theologians. Ignatius told them, 
please go to live, go to sleep every night to any hospital around. Don't go to very luxurious hotels or bishop residence, but go to the hospitals, okay? So a spirituality of caring was something that it is rooted in our Ignatian spirituality, contact with the poor. We should ask, we should say something about what a hospital meant in 16th century, it's a bit different from what we know now, but okay, no charm. This is the name for next conference. This is the name of one of the first companions who died in 1538, so died two years before the society was founded. No many people know this man, whether from Malaga, from Andalusia, South Spain. But this, mo this man and this uh, first companion, this was in Paris, Pascasio Roet. This was uh, really in Paris. Uh, these two died, died because they got sick, taking care of sick people. This, the first one is a uh, bachiller, Diego de Office, is this one. It's the only picture I could find of this man. And then Pascasio Roet, from Picardia, France. He died in 1562, and he also uh, because he got la, the, uh, how do you call it, la peste, yes, no? in, uh, in, in Paris, in Paris. And we had a beautiful, emotional, spiritual document. Last letter he wrote, he wrote a letter specifying all the thing, all the things he had touched, in contact with, in order to to prevent that other other companions could touch the same thing and uh, to avoid them to, to get the, the best, you know, the best. So, so, uh, Pascal Roet. So, there are many Jesuits, and the national spirituality took very seriously. Uh, this is uh, San uh, uh, Luis uh, Gonzaga and, uh, and Peter uh, Claver. More than uh, 2,000 Jesuits. They were martyrs of charity because they died because of, they decided to remain in the cities and the small village where important viruses were, and they decided not to leave. Uh, you can imagine today because uh, uh, last month uh, another virus is around, you know, all over the world. And uh, what the first year with the superiors used to send away to, to push out of the city the, the novices or the scholastics? No, please leave. But many of the professed Jesuit and former Jesuit, they decided to stay, taking care of people. And we are sick also, it's what? Well, it's, uh, we, we, we remain. So we have here San Luis Gonzaga, Peter Claver. In this year, 74 Jesuit in France died because of this. 103 this year in another uh, epidemic of this in Italy and South Spain, Sevilla 23 in this in this year and Poland more than 100. So you see there are a lot of uh, a lot of commitment, a very deep commitment with the spirituality of caring and uh, Ignatian spirituality has a foot always very close to these kind of ministries. And, and related to this Apostolate of caring people, we found this one, a spirituality for dying people, of dying people. Uh, we don't know much about this, but this was very important among the, the, the tradition and history of Ignatian spirituality, to help people to have a peaceful dying, to pass away, reconcile with others, with themselves, and with God. Oh, we had hundreds and hundreds of letters in which we can check how the Jesuits were called, were called to take care of different people in their own houses at any time, day or night, and they were called just to help people to have a peaceful and quiet uh, dying, to pass away in the hands of God. This is a wonderful book. This is a Methodus, Methodus Adeus Ayobandus Moriuntu, to help people who are going to die. This is Ignatius, when, when Ignatius discovered that many of the Jesuits all over the world were working in this ministry, he said, we need a guide. We need a guide. We need a directory. We, Jesuits, we have directories for everything. <laughs> for everything. They never the Jesuits. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was saying that I don't know how many of the Jesuits follow the directory, but <laughs> but directories are there. So Ignatius wanted really to have a guide. So how to help Jesuits to well, if you are called to visit a person who is dying, how to proceed, what to do. And we have this beautiful book written by the Secretary of Ignatius, Brother Polanco, and it was translated to 12 different languages. And many, many people in all around here wanted to have this around her. And I, I have read this book many times. It is ready to be published among some others. And it's very practical, it's very spiritual, and it's very theological. Dogmatic spirituality and pastoral. How to approach what to say, how to ask, how to relate with people, with the relatives who are there, how to invite them to come to the room, and now it is better to leave the room. <laughs> so many, many practical things. I recognize myself that for me, one of the most difficult situations as a priest is when I have to, to go for, uh, to accompany a family to the cemetery of the, or to the territory or it's a difficult situation, emotional, very delicate, and if you are not very, very close to the family, many times you don't know how to proceed well. I think it is, in some times, in some aspects, this is a 16th century book, of course, theology has developed a lot, but we can discover how delicate and spiritual this book are. There are so many others published in this, uh, about this, this topic, no? but it was one of the big interests of Ignatius Loyola. There was a directory that was written by Father Polanco, a very frequent ministry among the first Jesuits. Roberto Bellarmino, St. Robert Bellarmino, wrote his Arte Veni Moriendi, The Arts of Good uh, Dying, Passing Away. And we have so many others here, but this is just to let you know that there was developed also a spirituality of helping people to to receive the, the last uh, uh, heart from God, the last. Uh. So we move to another um, to another uh, field of ministry, and I call this a popular mission in rural areas as a way of option for the poor at that time, and this was a very very important way of incarnate the Ignatian. Uh, spirituality. And in this, the, the, the Jesuit, they, they were really a masters. And there were other two religious congregations that followed this method of evangelization in rural areas. Okay, the one founded by St. Vincent Paul, the, the, the priest of the mission, and the one founded by Alfonso Maria Liguorio, the Redemptorist. They adopted this method and they were very, very uh, efficient and very, yeah, one or a small team of Jesuit uh, for one week or ten days in a place, in a very poor and rural place, they organized this week offering uh, preachings and confessions and communions and processions and liturgies, confraternities, and they organized talk to the children, to catechism, and talks to women, and talk to men, and talk, and they organize, uh, it's a very apostolic project for these uh, uh, rural areas, no? and a pastoral project. They develop a pastoral project. And at the end, before leaving, they try to organize, to put the experience into institutions. Now, yes, we are living, but we need a, a small a structure to keep alive this experience you have gone through. So this was a very, this is, oh, sorry. Father Franciscus Regis died in 1640. He was quite known because of this apostolate, apostolate. And this other one, uh, Peter of uh, Calata Youth, we are now approaching the 18th century. You see, died in 73. This Catechism of Christian Doctrine. This is a picture of this book. It's very old. The original one he used to have, you see the rosary and the cross and uh, yes, preaching. This is a, a very popular man and they, they started a school, no? a school of how to proceed 
in a, pro a pastoral project in, uh, to evangelize all these uh, areas. No? This is the Catechism of Christian Doctrines. Uh, we cannot see very good in the picture, but it is the same method. Question and answer, question and answer, question and answer. Uh, you know, and this uh, preaching. So, confraternities, confraternities. Um, communities for lay people. Not everything started with the Christian life communities in the 70s. The first Jesuit started and believed very deeply in this ministry, in this ministry. We have to live because we have to keep on moving all our lives and moving from a place to a place. But to keep the spirit rooted in time and in this place, it would be very good to found a confraternities and the kind of institutions to keep alive. The first one was founded by Peter Faber and Laines when they were sent by the Pope in 1540 from Rome to Parma. They were the two first Jesuits in leaving the first group. When Peter Faber and Laines, they left Rome, the group will never meet again. Eh? They never, but they founded this congregation of Holy Name of Jesus in Parma. And we have a very nice, very deep spiritual writing from Peter Faber, three pages, giving very practical instructions. If you want to persevere, to, to, you want to be faithful to what you have received, follow this instruction. Sacraments, uh, prayer, works of mercy, uh, okay. So, but another one from Ignatius Loyola in Rome, 1547, Congregation of Holy Apostles, and uh, this from uh, Jeronimo Nadal in Messina, and other ones from Laines in Padua, Venezia. With the first years we, we started, Ignatian spirituality became spread on different groups of lay people, eh? most of them founded by Jesuits, but you can continue, keep walking by yourselves. We have given, as Jesus said, the main uh, inspiration, the first spirit, but now you are ready to continue by yourself, as St. Paul used to do, no? You remember with the first Christian's community. Uh, well, these are the congregations of Our Lady, you say that in English, as Congregaciones Marianas, is it congregation? Sorry? Sodality of Mary, yeah, this is. We're very popular, isn't it? We had a, a lot all over the world. A lot. How much is it a lot? Do you know? A lot is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but when do you think a lot? What are you thinking of? <laughs> a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Very good question. I will give you for this answer five points, but till ten is still a. Well, a lot means. A lot of congregation. <laughs> more than 100,000. More than 100,000. In the moment they go, this uh, solidarity of Mary, congregation of Our Lady, moved into Christian life communities, there were more than 100,000 all around the world. Man, even the Pope was very so excited with this. Well, this is the, 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 the responsible for all of that with this father, Father Jean Leonis. Leonis a Belge Jesuit from Belgium. This was the founder of everything, who started a congregation in Collegio Romano in Rome, eh? Roman College, and he started with a small community. Uh, things happen like this. If you ask Teresa de Calcutta, how did you found it, all this? She answered, I don't know, I just started. I just started, and now I am the general mother of all this, but I don't know how it happened. If you ask Dorothy Day, Dorothy Day, you know him from the United States, how do you start this? I don't know, I'm just started. This man just started to meet people in this Collegio Romano and was the founder, well, with the name of a congregation of Annunciation, then an Our Lady. Eh? Was the first movement for lay people in the church, officially approved by the Pope and supported very seriously for all Father Generals, no? In Austria, for example, in Austria in 1665, uh, there was a congregation of Christ of Agony, almost 70,000 members, almost, in Austria. And believe me, 
Austria is a very, very small country compared to China. <laughs> China is 20,000 20, times Austria. And they can be imagine it's a small country, but they, they manage to belong this. So for congregation of Our Lady to Christian life communities, but congregations was a way of put a spirit in time. Another way of putting spirit is to help the spirit to enter into our life from Collegio Romano to Borgo Santo Spirit, you know, the Curia of uh, the Jesuits in Rome. Uh, these are some numbers, but in 63 there were 85,000 congregations, no? And in May, in 31st May, uh, were approval the Christian life communities, the Christian life communities. Uh, the influence in the church was very big. This is something very Ignatian. Make the others back. To create a kind of chain of uh, spiritual uh, steps, no? Make the others become the... So 57 saints, 49 blessed, officially recognized people in the church, 22 founders of religious congregation received the Ignatian inspiration in these congregations, and, for example, Francis Sells, John Eude, Alfonso Maria Liguorio, the founder of Redentorist, John Baptiste Lasalle, fundator of the Brothers of Lasalle, Camilo de Lelis, fundator of these uh, hospitalitarian congregations. So, this was another, uh, in that time, 18th, 18th century, was so important for the Ignatian spirituality. So, let's say a word about the spiritual exercises. The first part is the experience, the experience. So, uh, is this in the genetic code of the Ignatian spirituality, the exercises? We have already said something at the beginning, if you remember, one hour and 15 minutes ago, so I am not going to say more about the spiritual exercises. But it was the, 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 the foundation of the experience of the first Jesuits. Each of them, the first six Jesuits, did the spiritual exercises under Ignatius, Loyola in Paris, Peter Faber, Francis Xavier, Diego Laines, Alfonso Salmeron, Nicolás de Bobadilla, well, the name, sorry for the translators. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Veronica, forgive me. Okay. So, uh, the, ex the spiritual exercises, before giving, it is written in the constitutions, before giving the spiritual exercises, you must go through the experience. It is written in the constitutions. When I say some people don't believe me, but it's written in the Constitution, so and, uh, I can read it for you later. So uh, it's, uh, I will give you the paragraph, because the paragraph is very important. The paragraph is 408-409, about, yeah, they say that every yes we must be familiarized with the spiritual exercises. It's a very important weapon, they say, an apostolic key, okay. but the experience of the first Jesuit in these years in Paris, in Paris, and uh, it was a condition to enter in the society of Jesus because it was a part of our identity, and it is written before that in the examen of the Constitution 65, paragraph 65. GC 34, perdón, GC 4 in 1581 uh, recommended spiritual exercises in the very first probatio, very first time of formation of the Jesuit. What does it mean? That means that the spiritual exercises was really, really a main requirement to understand in national spirituality. And now we are in the second Polothensic congregation. That was the general congregation during the suppression of the Society of Jesus in 1785. Okay, you were a Jesuit. The Society of Jesus was suppressed. You were invited, well, you were pushed to leave the Society of Jesus. If you want to come back, they said, if you were an scholastic, you have to go through again the 30 days retreat. If you were a former Jesuit, a professor, whatever, a brother Jesuit, you have to repeat eight days retreat. But what does it mean? That the condition to, to become again a Jesuit should go through the experience of the spiritual exercises. 
spiritual exercises. This is the main structure of Ignatian spirituality as I started this lecture minutes ago. So, this is a Father Rotam. We have three or three, three big men that really uh, improve and develop the, 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 the going back to the spiritual exercises. This was the Father Rotam, the first one, who was the first general after the suppression of the Society of Jesus, Father Rotam. Then the father, Vladimir Ledokovsky, who really uh, made a big effort to go to a faithful understanding of the spiritual exercises. And then, of course, Father Arupe, after Vatican II, you know? Uh, Vatican II, who, who, who invited the church and the religious congregation to go back to their own sources or identity. And go back to our sources means go back mainly, not only, but mainly to the spiritual exercises. So what I have done with my, I'm sure I had one pause here, so. So after the experience, then apostolate. Yes, the Jesuit became very, very faithful apostles for the spiritual exercises. And we found this first in Ignatius Loyola, who started giving spiritual exercises to his family while he was uh, sick in Loyola, recovering for the canyon ball. He started giving spiritual exercises through spiritual conversations. This was the very, very first, very, very first adaptation of the spiritual exercises, Ignatius in Loyola. But he continued after in Salamanca, in Alcalá, in Jerusalem. I can imagine Ignatius Loyola in the ship going to Jerusalem, giving spiritual exercises to the people in the boat, maybe, maybe. And then, why it is so important? It is written in the Constitution that every Jesuit should be very familiar to the spiritual exercises for the apostolate, for the apostolate. How to give the spiritual exercises? I have already talked about this directory. The most important one may be Father Aquaviva, 1599, okay? But the spiritual exercises are always there. How they give the spiritual exercises, the first Jesuits? They, they were ready to go to, to particular houses to give the points for reflections. They. Sorry, Stephen, they didn't need a huge sacred house <laughs> to give. But at the beginning, it was so simple and so poor. Do you want, okay, tomorrow at 8.30, I will be at your home. Be ready with a sheet of paper and a, or your tablet ready to take notes because I will give you spiritual exercises. Or they go to convents or to schools, no? Uh, very, but the, the spiritual exercises started in a very fragile way with very simple structures and maybe the first house for spiritual exercises was founded in 1579 and under Francis Borgia. Oh, there is a long history about this, about the spiritual exercises. To whom? To men, to women, to children, to one, to groups, in open or in close ways, many, many, many different ways of giving the spiritual exercises. Some numbers, some numbers. Uh, in Ingolstadt, for example, 16. In Ratisbon, very Protestant area. They give particularly to seven people. In Great Britain, there were big groups, up to 300 people, uh, giving the spiritual exercises. Well, uh, in 1727, 1727, in France, there were seven retreat houses for men and four retreat houses for women. Huh? Uh, and then developed in 17th century, another religious congregations or diocesan priests started to give also the spiritual exercises inspired by the Jesuits. And in 19th century, some two religious congregations appeared focused mainly in his first apostolate, 
to give or to take care of the spiritual exercises, okay? Then we find the oblatos, oblates of Virgin Mary, and uh, parochial cooperators of Christ's King, los par cooperadores parroquiales, yeah? So, these are a small congregation, but the main point of their own charisma is to give the spiritual exercises, of to take care in the houses of the spiritual exercises as the handmaids of Christ's King. And, oh, this is a point, this is a huge point. We have a, a workshop if, uh, on women, but from the very beginning, a, di a charismatic point of Ignatian spirituality was about the way Jesuit started relationship with women. And for many uh, other sections of the church, this was a bit uh, a scandal, you know, because of the familiar way as religious and priests, they had to contact with women. Uh, this topic is really, there was a, there was a, uh, is there here in this room, uh, someone from the Dominican uh, congregation? <laughs> no, no Dominican around us? No, you know. <laughs> Because there was a, a, oh yeah, but it is public, and there are a lot of literature about this. The relationship of one, of one Dominic uh, from his family, Chorcano, a very great theologian, the logic, theologic, uh, los, the theological places, very good theological work in the 16th century. But he really didn't like at all the Jesuits. And he wrote a document that an uh, Irish researcher discovered in an Oxford library maybe 15 years ago. And he was really hard against the Jesuits, against the founder. He said, Ignatius Loyola is a man who was accused by the Inquisition so many times. Uh, a congregation founded that for a man, by a man who was suspected, cannot be very orthodox. So against Ignatius, against the method of the spiritual exercises, he said, this method of prayer is quite Illuminates quite close to the alumbrados, so it cannot be a good method of Catholic Orthodox work. So, and he accused the Jesuits, said, they are so close to women. This is not possible for a priest religious congregation. And he is to accuse sometimes the Jesuits, and, uh, and of course they were at the beginning. When Ignatius was, well, not a Jesuit, was in al what was it? When Ignatius was in Alcala, living in Antesana Hospital, 1523, he used to receive women in his own room at the, uh, in the late evening or very early in the morning. And we know this because we have the sources, a lot of documents of that. And when they ask people, when they, if, do you remember a pilgrim that came here in 23? Oh yes, I remember. Who was that? Oh, it was a man from the north, Indigo, Dojola, okay. Was he living here? Yes, he was living here. And uh, what did he try to do? Well, sometimes he goes to university, other times no. He spent preaching to be, talking to people. Well, coming people coming here to his room? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, were there any women coming here to his room? Oh yes, many women came to her. Oh. <laughs> Uh, and uh, they, they talk, oh yes, they talk a lot, very long conversation. What did they talk about? Oh, I don't know, I was never listening. <laughs> I don't know, but they were talking, yeah, okay. And many of them, they came covered like this, and when they entered in the room, they, they can cover them. And so, and Ignatius didn't change this way of uh, approaching to women, and didn't change them. And uh, the first Jesuit followed this way. A man, a woman, a child, it's not a matter. But as the time passed, they had to change and to become more and more as an other religious congregation proceed in the 17th century. Okay, but what is important for us now, that from the very beginning, and we will talk about this wonderful woman, Isabel Roser, just a couple of minutes. From the very beginning, till GC 34, in 1995, Jesuit had it's national spirituality, not Jesuit. Ignatian spirituality had a special spiritual, theological reflection and pastoral way of uh, collaborate or to, uh, with, with women. This woman was a Jesuit. She was a Jesuit for nine months, uh, nine months, with two close friends. 
Francisca Cruillas and Lucrecia Grandin. Doesn't matter about names. Okay. But they were Jesuits. Because this woman met Ignatius in Barcelona. And uh, Ignatius was in Barcelona three different times. And he got very good female friends. And uh, this woman helped Ignatius. For seven years, he was uh, studying in Paris. Every year, this woman sent to Ignatius a hundred ducats, ducados. This is a lot of money. This is, was enough for two students to live for one year in the best university of Europe, as Javier told us yesterday. Boarding, food, books, registration, and we know that this is enough for two people. But this woman sent all this money only for Ignatius. So when his husband died, he traveled to Rome. He wanted to become a Jesuit. And Peter favored right from Barcelona to Rome to Ignatius. Ignatius, be ready because Jose is going to Rome. <laughs> we have the letter. And Ignatius answered, please, Peter, do as much as possible to keep Jose in Barcelona. <laughs> because he knew very well. A strong woman. And he traveled to Rome. And Ignatius says, I prefer to have you as friend, not under obedience. This woman wrote to the Pope, please, Pope, tell Father Ignatius to admit me in his congregation. And I don't know why the Pope said yes. <laughs> So the Pope wrote to Ignatius, Father Ignatius, you have to admit this woman and the two friends under obedience in your congregations. And it was a related to mission, and Ignatius said, okay. So here we have this first women, Isabel Roser and his her uh, friends Jesuit. Uh, I don't know. This is uh, a, a, a part of the letter that this woman wrote to the Pope. I discovered so many virtues in Master Ignatius and his companions that I pronounce a vow of living under his obedience and also a vow of chastity and poverty, private vows. I humbly pledge to the Pope, to the Pope Paul III, your sanctity, may you agree to make me of the same congregation of Jesus and push Maestro Ignacio to take the solemn vow in his hands. This is in Fontes Documentales, pages, blah, blah, blah. So, Ignacio had to, 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 to agree, and he sent these three women to work in Santa Marta house. It was a house for prostitutes who wanted uh, to change life. Okay, problems, problems. Whether it's Jesuit, sometimes it's a conflict, sometimes it's a problem. So is a woman become a Jesuit, as a Jesuit has a problem, has a conflict. So there was misunderstandings there, and at the end Ignatius asks the Pope to liberate, to cut this uh, link of obedience. So, but they, in the moment that they pronounce a vow, and the vow is received by a uh, recognized authority in the church, they were Jesuits, okay? They pronounced the vows in the, uh, December 25th of uh, 1544. So they were Jesuits for nine months. Isabel Roser after left to Barcelona, the other one left to Catalonia, I don't remember what place, and the other one remained in Italy, in Naples, taking care of the poor in a hospital until they died. Well, they were so other tentatives, but we don't have time to enter. But what I mean is that uh, uh, women were always there. Maybe one of the best, best, uh, amazing attempts uh, and fights to be a, become a Jesuit was one of these of, of Mary Ward. Uh, Mary Ward, uh, uh, amazing uh, process and, uh, and woman and uh, yeah, 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 okay. But female religious uh, congregation, Ignatian Institute. Female religious Ignatian institutes before the suppression, six. Founded, six. Okay, now be ready for next. This says, okay, this word six. Uh, the founder, the congregation, and the place. But after the restoration in 1845, 
total 209. 209 female religious congregations inspired by Ignatian spirituality, founded by a Jesuit or founded by a religious uh, woman who received the charisma, and sometimes a Jesuit inspiring, helping, a spiritual direction, writing or helping to write the constitutions, but it is a lot, 2009. You have every 10 years, 32, every 10 years, 23, every 10 years, 17, 10 years, 13. There are a lot, it's amazing. It's amazing. In, in different places, the first is France. France, Spain, Italy, United States, Canada, 11. This is in general. In Asia, make, uh, even, I'm sorry, Latin America, Mexico, Argentina, eight, five, everywhere, many parts in the world. So women manage to follow Ignatian spirituality in a, a, till the point that congregations appear. Thailand, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, India, seven in India, Argelia, Siren, Nigeria, Australia, four, and uh, well, I don't know what is this. Uh, <laughs> yesterday appeared this R, uh, A, there, and I was checking my information, and I don't know what this A belongs. But we need this A to, to have seven, you know? <laughs> so let the A rest there, and maybe I will write an email to Mickey just to, to let him, her know what is, this A means. But seven in Africa, okay. Well, spiritual literature in 17th century. Uh, I had a word document open here, but if I close this and open the other, this can be destroyed. So this is a very long list. I have here five pages of bibliography in a small letter about spiritual literature from this time, talking about prayer, ascetic practice, patient of Christ, sanctification, confirmation with Christ, love of God, Ignatian spirituality and books. All these you have, but uh, 200 years before. So titles, a lot in France, in Portugal, in Spain, in Italy, in Germany, Poland, Lithuania, in many languages, to many people, different, many, many books of devotion, devotion, devotion. So another way of put the spirit in time is through printer through printer. And uh, yeah, Ignatian spirituality from the very beginning, as I told you how many big, big, uh, uh, largest numbers of letters we have, 12 volumes of letters of Ignatius Loyola, Ignatian spirituality is very related to, to, to printer, paper. Now we would say PDF documents. Okay. And Ignatian devotion, so important Ignatian devotions. The yes, Ignatian spirituality, according to times and places, help people to discover also their own ways of prayer. So, the, the Jesuit had problems also with this topic. A devotion to frequent communion. We could say now that for us, Maybe to have communion one every day is good. Many of you maybe go to Mass every day and you receive communion. If for any reason you have to go two times a day to a Mass, maybe you receive communion two times. But at that time, it was nobody could think about it. Nobody could think about it. Uh, communion was very common for lay people once a month. Once a month, if you are quite pious, devout person. If not once a year, is what the church used to say. Everybody has to receive communion at least once a year, once a month. Father Aquaviva, Father Aquaviva, I have talked about him, said, if a Jesuit is directing a lay people, lay man or woman, and she or he asks for communion more frequent than once, a week, this Jesuit should ask for permission to his provincial. I have a person 
very devout person who wants to receive communion twice a week. Can I say yes to him or to her? Well, you know, the, the, the Jesuits were very, very serious to, to promote frequent communion because they were so sure that in the Eucharist something inner knowledge of Jesus and familiarity with God and friendship with Christ happened. So there was another point where it was not very clear at the beginning, but frequent communion. Of course, devotion to Our Lady, in this point, Jesuits were not original, but they had always Mary, as uh, Javier told us, uh, starting from San Ignatius. A devotion to Saint Joseph, especially in France in 17th century, because at that time, there was a very influential Jesuit called Father Louis Lallemon, a very important tertiary instructor. And he promoted among the Jesuits information a very deep and spiritual devotion to Saint Joseph. I did my, this third year, this experience of tertiary in Chile with a Jesuit instructor who had really deep devotion to Saint Joseph. So, a devotion. Angels, devotion to angels, Peter Favor. If you read Peter Favor, he was very frequent in contact with angels. He prayed to angels. And uh, devotion to purgatory. Purgatory is the English word, is it right? For, yes, purgatory. purgatory. Uh, yeah. There is a lot of books on this topic. How to pray for the souls who are in the purgatory. Uh, well, for us, this is a theological topic that now is uh, aside, no? But some devotion at the 18th century, and of course, maybe the main one was the devotion to Sacred Heart of Christ. This started also with Faber and Borgia, who were very devoted to the wound of Christ especially this wound in the side of Christ. And it was the very beginning of the devotion to the Sacred Heart of Christ. And then the Jesuits took this devotion to fight against the rigorism and the, and the strong and ascetic way of thinking of the Hansenism, very pessimistic anthropology and the Hansenism. So the Jesuits went to the heart of Christ in order to discover in the heart the mercy of God, the love of God, the goodness of God, the peacefulness of God. So devotion to the sacred heart of Christ was very important, starting mainly, developing mainly in the 18th century. Peter Canisius of Father Luis Aleman, and of course, uh, Saint, uh, Saint Claude de la Colombière in Paris Le Monial, uh, and France, uh, uh, Margarita de la Coque. There is a huge tradition uh, concerning this devotion to Sacred Heart of Christ. 700. In 1733, there were 700 fraternities under the devotion to the Sacred Heart of Christ. And here, yes, the Ignatian spirituality was closely related to this, to this devotion. We find too in Macau and Peking and uh, in China in 1708, there was one church under the advocation of a sacred heart of church. Well, let's move, uh, let's move uh, a spirituality for hard times. 73. Dominus and Redemptor. This is the papal document in which the suppression of the society is very explicitly written. Very explicitly, that means it's a long document. I have read the document. I have the book here. Well, I could not travel with two sweet cases, but um, as I had Javier with me, he brought the books of, uh, with him. And then, <laughs> so the, the document of the suppression of the society of Jesus is long and is very radical. The Pope wanted to suppress everything, everything. 
So the Pope said, it is not the first time that a Pope is going to suppress a religious congregation. And he started to offer a long list of other religious congregations that other popes had already suppressed. And they said, now is the time for the Jesuits. And then I suppressed everything. Properties, parishes, blah, 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 general, superiors, blah, blah, blah. So at the end, I want nothing in this. Why this? It could be a very, very, very long and complicated story. But during this time, that the, 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 in 1814, the, 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 the Society of Jesus uh, was uh, restored. Uh, then we find uh, this man, who was the leader at that time of the Father Ritchie, was elected in 58. And the first Jesuit was pushed away from Portugal in 59. Poor man. I mean, just a few months after electing general, and then the big problems started for him. So, uh, but Lorenzo Ricci, uh, well, after that from France, and then from Spain, and all Latin America, and this man died in the Castello de San Angelo in Rome in 75, after two years in prison. I would like to read to you, well, um, uh, not all the documents, but here we have a declaration of innocence that Father Ricci uh, wrote after having received the last communion, and he wanted just to put it in right, this is two papers, two, 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 two sheets of, I am not going to read it. But we have here it, and he's, he's very sure that before present myself before God, because I am dying now, I am really, I, what I deeply want to declare is that I am innocent about everything that I am accused. I know my Jesuits. And I declare that all Jesuits are innocent, and many of them, they still don't know how, why they have been pushed away of their own territories and missions. And I forgive to all the people that have been created or produced this situation for us. So this is a very emotional, spiritual, and uh, very deep uh, 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 document. And uh, then he died. And, uh, 30 years before the, the restoration of the Society of Jesus. But he was really rooted in a Ignatian spirituality. No? Uh, before, before going to San Angelo, Castle, uh, Castle of San Angelo, he wrote six or seven letters to the whole society, trying to keep alive. OK, brothers, my companion Jesuits, we are suffering a lot. This is a new situation for us. They, all the letters are here, eh? uh, then it's time to be humble, it's time to put ourselves, and he always invokes to Mary and to Sacred Heart of Christ. Of, of Christ. And he said, be obedient, be humble, and we have to accept this as our destiny and maybe as a will of God for all of us. So keep on praying and keep on uh, uh, doing well and be faithful to our spirituality. With Father Rotan, the, 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 the Jesuits were restored. Father Rotan was, after being restored, the first thing, what is the first thing? To go back again to the spiritual exercises. To go back again to the spiritual exercises. And this man wrote a few articles on the spiritual exercises. He studied very deeply Spanish to understand the original text. And we have published some articles of this, of this man. And he, as first and main instruction, said to these 600 Jesuits that remained in Russia, that remained there in Russia, they said, go back to the experience of the spiritual exercises. This is the key word for our uh, uh, new life that we are starting, uh, starting now. And some letters. He worried about social formation and identity, the spiritual exercises, and then mission. It was a moment in which the society of Jesus could be worried about herself because we are so weak, we are come from a long period of being prosecuted, but he said no, no. Even though we are weak and we are very few, keep on moving on mission. Missions to, to Syria, to Calcutta, to Mankin, to Madagascar, to Australia, even though we're a few, but the needs are so, so much. 
What about the developing of the Jesuits during this time? I told you when we, the Society of Jesus were restored, there were 600. Many of them very old and weak and sick. Huh? But growing, growing, 11,000, 13,000, 15,000, 25,000 in 36 with the Father General uh, Francis uh, Vernes. Vernes. And then, this is not a Jesuit. <laughs> well, it could be maybe inculturate Jesuit with a, a special dress. No. <laughs> just to give thanks, just to give thanks to God for this woman. We are here in part because of this woman. She doesn't allow the document of the Pope to come into his, uh, her, sorry, her, her properties, her lands. Because if the document of the Pope wanted to be valid, this document should be received by the political authorities in the territory. And this was the political authority who had to push away the Jesuits from their territories. And this queen, I can imagine, what is this? A document from the Pope? Okay, I am not Catholic, let me check. She has started really to push away the Jesuits. Why? I don't have any reason to push the Jesuits away. No. On the contrary, I have many reasons to keep them here. Why? Do you know why? Because of the good, so good work that the Jesuits in Russia were doing with education, with high schools. This woman said, no, Jesuits institution for education are the best in my country. I cannot push them this, uh, this, no, 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 I don't recognize. So the Jesuit will remain here. And the Jesuit went to the queen. I said, sorry, but you must recognize this because we have to obey the Pope. The Jesuit were very honest. We, if this comes from the Pope, we have to obey the Pope, so you have to suppress us and push us away. <laughs> <laughs> this happened like this. But she said, no. In Prussia, the king, the emperor Maximiliano II of Prussia said, okay, I don't want you to leave, so you will stay here. You have to obey the Pope, okay, you will not, you can uh, leave the Jesuit, the, the, the Jesuit, but you will remain here as a diocesan priest. And I will not allow you to leave my country because of the same reason. The prestigious, the prestigious uh, recognition that the Jesuits had in their uh, schools. So, different politics. Catalina de Russia say no. It is a problem of the Pope, but it's not my problem. And Maximiliano of Prussia said, okay, I, rec I, 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 I know that you have to obey the Pope, so you will leave the, the, the Society of Jesus, but you will stay here. And then anything will change. You will continue with your uh, high schools as you are doing now. So, we have to finish. And then we reach now, after restoration, the contemporary Society of Jesus. Uh, 65 to 214. So, this is Father Arupe period. First period, we could say, talk a bit, could be very complex, but just three or four points. From GC 31, in the, during the Council Vatican II, maybe in the 65, till GC 33, in 81, when Father Kolbebach was elected. But this is mainly the Arupe times. Very delicate time, conflicts there, a world changing very, very fast, religious life in searching of a new identity for new times, and then we thank God for the figure of the, and the charisma of Father Arupe. Uh, first thing of Father Arupe, what to do first thing? Go back to the exercises. Go back to the exercises. Okay, yes, <laughs> let's go back to the exercises. This is what's father first thing. In time of crisis, let's go back to our sources, to the spiritual exercises. Uh, first, back to the sources. GC 34, 31, sorry, said many things. But for us in, in concerning spirituality, okay, Ignatian spirituality, 
Go back to your own identity. Remember where did you come from? So many periods, different Baroque periods, neoclassical period, a crisis. So we need to go back to fresh and pure waters. So go back to our sources. And Father Arupe developed uh, institutions to go back to the sources. Institutes to study a new way of giving the spiritual exercises, probably closer to the original way, being faithful to the experience, to the charisma. A time to develop tentative of apostolic discernment, discernment in common. This was a conflict point for Father Arupe also. But Ignatian spirituality went back. This was very, very common during Ignatian times. We know, maybe you know, the deliberation of 1539, when the Jesuit, the 10 first Jesuit, 10 for Jesuit, five more minutes, they are saying to me, okay. <laughs> Rome, Rome, 1539, the Jesuit decided to become an institution, a society of Jesus. So, they had a deliberation. To become a society of Jesus was not a decision of Ignatius Loyola. It was a decision of a group discerning in common, searching God in common, praying together, sharing, making at the end of the day a common exam together. This is the first deliberation they did. No. This is the first deliberation we have documents about. But go back to Paris. Montmartre, August 15, 1534, in Paris. They pronounced the vows of Montmartre. We suppose, I am so sure, that this ceremony of the vows of Montmartre was preceded by a long period of deliberation, of thinking and prayer in common. What was the intuition of Father Arrupe? We go back, we need to go back to understanding our way of moving and our dynamic apostolic way of doing a mission through the liberation in common, searching God in common. It is true that obedience is very clear in our spirituality, of course, but obedience is always enriched by this searching God in common. Okay, go to the sources, go back to spiritual discernment, GC 31st, collaboration, collaboration with others. This congregation in 65 started to say, we are with others, lay people, friends in the Lord. So start moving toward this direction. And GC 31st insisted very much in prayer, in prayer. And in culturation, of course. Now we are in the times going back to, to, to Matteo Ricci, maybe and to Baglignano, in culturation, oh, in the conference in 2010, maybe you have discussed a lot about this topic, uh, and Matteo Ricci had uh, problems with this, and conflict with this, with the Vatican, and even with the Father General in Rome, because of the liturgy, and too much in culturation, they thought, maybe. And Father Arupe went back to this, and this evangelization through in culturation. Okay, and you see 32, 33, well, maybe will be remembered by, be, because of commitment with justice. To believe in God, in Jesus Christ, is a commitment with history, a commitment with the poor, a commitment with dignity. We have to push the history towards the end, omega point, as the young de Chardin used to say, the omega point is Christ. And we have to push in our mission history towards Christ, that it is calling the whole history universe to him. The, pro the consequence of the service to faith and promotion of justice. 47 Jesuits were killed in these years in different parts of the world, Latin America and Africa and Asia. Here you have the picture of these Ejakuria and companions because now we are celebrating, commemorating the 25th anniversary when they were killed in uh, Uka, 
in uh, 1989, November 16, they were shooted by, uh, okay. So GC 31, GC 33. So a spirituality of incarnation, incarnation. So what about last congregations? Many topics that maybe you know better than me. But GC 34, we are servants of the mission of Christ, decree number two. And maybe the GC 34 will be remembered apart from the accommodation of our uh, canon law uh, to the constitutions and all complementary norms, but uh, spiritually, theologically speaking, we could say that culture, justice, and dialogue. There is a circle there. Uh, how to understand in these three main perspectives of mission, not separate way, enculturation or working for justice or dialogue, no, no. If we want to have a deep dialogue, we should be through culture and taking account justice. And these three uh, members of this triangle as a perspective for a new uh, understanding of our mission. Mission for others, mission with others, GC 34, and the decree 14, uh, woman. The first time that a general congregation uh, decided to write a document specifically, uh, starting for saying, uh, asking for forgiveness, uh, and trying to, from uh, 94, 95, to uh, start, keep on moving in a more, maybe, Ignatian way of this. So, so points, where is the Ignatian spirituality today? Where is the Holy Spirit leading us? I am in point number five. It is called conclusion, and now we are in point B. This is the last one. <laughs> so, well, this is a spirituality of, a, of yes, being always, annotation 18 and 19, keep on going, going, being creative in our way of giving the spiritual exercises. In our past, from the 16th century, Jesuits were very creative using the spiritual exercises. There are a lot, a lot of ways giving the spiritual exercises to so many different people in culture, tribals, indigenous people, so many people believe, unbelievers, Catholic, non-Catholics, Muslims, Hindus. So we are now in a very rich period in our spirituality. So GC 45, according to contemplation to attain love, he put us in contact with ecology. Ecology, the world as a creature of God. So let's move towards this point, taking care of the creation. So GC 32 was justice. GC 35 talks about more reconciliation. In a world of conflicts and wars and divisions, Okay, one of our main ministers should be reconciliated. Became friends again. Try to establish peace where there is a war or a division. And the spirituality of uh, leadership, uh, of spirituality, the part of the Constitution, number nine, talks about it, the leadership, what a Father General should be, leadership. But we are there trying to, to reflect spiritually about a way of helping others to do better their own mission. This is a leadership. No? So, pilgriming today, where is the Holy Spirit leading us? <laughs> what a question, I don't know. But we could imagine something according to history, history, past, where we are now, present, where are we going? If we ask this question to the Holy Spirit, well, a spirituality of listening to better help. I think that the national spirituality is making an effort today to develop listening. What is going on in different parts of the world? We need to listen first to understand and then to help. But listening, the spirituality of listening. After listening, I think we have to develop a spirituality of conversation. Not only face-to-face -face conversation, but country to country, culture to culture. We can be inspired by Peter Faber 
and say, well, Peter Faber help us to dialogue. Huh? Listening, understanding, and then establish a spiritual dialogue. Constantly thinking and renewing the spiritual exercises. The text, 16th century text is there, of course. There are some specialists who study the text, but many of us, what we have to do is take the spirit from the text and how to adapt it to new context, to new people. So a spirituality of communion, of communion, is more than putting things together or putting people together. Communion is a, where the Holy Spirit is, communion starts growing and growing. So, I think we have to reflect and not to lose this perspective also. The theologian has the responsibility for that. So to think about a spiritual, systematic, Ignatian theology. Putting in dialogue the sources, the theology, and the spirituality. Please don't break this circle. The sources, first historicalism, the spirituality, and theology working and walking together. So, the very notion, contemplation in all things, as contemplation to obtain love. So, keep on walking. Thank you very much.